The President of the United States is strong. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on Earth. A solid meeting with, um, with uh, the, uh, they make a very good point. Here's the deal. A guiding light during tough times. The cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. And one path we shall never choose, and that is the path of surrender or submission. Give me a break, man. <laughs> Respected on the global stage. We will not eradicate violent conflict in our lifetimes. There will be times when nations, acting individually or in concert, will find the use of force not only necessary, but morally justified. This is my message from Earth to Paul. On behalf of me, the And above all, the Commander in Chief. Here's what drives the driver in the states that are affected. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. Sky News Digital Originals presents The Decline of a President. Joe Biden's decline is taking center stage for all the world to see. And legitimate questions are now being asked about the man who is hoping to be president of the United States again. What's important is that almost every leading Democrat in the country, and of course the Republicans, are talking about it. Uh, dinner parties in Washington and New York are filled with discussion about um, is Joe Biden ready to run for president in 2024? Is it a political risk? And is it also a risk for the country? Uh, should he run again? And if he wins, he will be 86 years old at the end of his second and last term. Hillary Clinton, who was the Democratic nominee in 2016, says it's a legitimate issue. Uh, the Washington Post says it's a legitimate issue. Uh, lots of people believe that Joe Biden has slipped a bit since he last ran for president and certainly has slipped since 10 years ago when he became when he became a vice president the second time. And the problem is we have only his own word and the word of those who work for him and are dependent on him for their livelihood and their power that he's fine. Uh, yes, foreign leaders will say he looked sharp and all of that, but you know, obviously, that's not the full measure of the man. Previous presidents, not all, but some, have taken cognitive tests. Uh, Donald Trump did when he was president. Cognitive tests are simple tests that uh, measure your mem short-term memory ability, your ability to comprehend, your ability to reason. And um, anyone who is running for an important position should pass those tests. Joe Biden has not taken those tests. He got a physical at Walter Reed Medical Center with Navy physicians in February. Uh, there was a physical report on his health, but no mention of any mental tests. There were none taken. And his doctor, the White House physician, refused to take any questions from the media whatsoever. I don't think he's qualified to be our president right now, to be honest with you. I've been calling for a while now for his uh, for him to leave, to resign, or to move on. I don't think he's cognitively fit to be our president. I think that he's got all kinds of issues. I don't know exactly what his issues are. I've, I've said all along, I'm not speaking as, a, you know, I am a physician. And by the way, a physician that took care of three presidents. I took care of President Bush, President Obama, and President Trump. So I'm really familiar with what it takes, both physically and cognitively, to do the job of commander in chief and head of state in the U.S. government. I, I've worked side by side with him for, for, for decades. And uh, this, he doesn't have what it takes. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but he's got some issues related to his age, uh, some cognitive decline. Uh, he's confused most of the time. He doesn't know where he's at, what he's doing. He slurs his speech. He shuffles when he walks. Uh, he's just, uh, it doesn't inspire confidence in our, 
and our allies, our allies don't, they don't uh, respect us and, and uh, trust us anymore. And our adversaries don't respect us or fear us anymore. And that's just a, a recipe for disaster here in the United States. President Trump had a cognitive test uh, because the far left and the liberal press here in the United States were uh, up in arms demanding that he have a, not only a physical exam, but a, but a cognitive assessment of some sort. And I was his physician at the time. We did that. He passed it with flying colors. And I think that if anyone needs that same test now, it's Joe Biden. Does Joe Biden have some sort of, you know, mental incapacity? I don't know, but they also give, you know, elderly people in the retirement homes ice cream as well. And he seems to always eat ice cream. So they give him a lot of protocols. Uh, no, I'm serious, but they give him a lot of protocols as, as if he is an elderly uh, patient. So, so I don't know. Uh, guys, when, we, when I watch this video, I don't like Joe Biden's politics at all, but I hate to see this happen because it's really a stain on America. I mean, I think that our, the, the least we should ask from our presidents is that they'd be able to conduct themselves without tripping and stumbling and always hitting their head, falling up the stairs. I mean, it's really just, it's it's a negative reflection on America because if the world is is being run by America, if we're one of the thought leaders of the world and our own president can't even walk, it's just kind of a bad stain on the whole world. I expect these fellows are going to uh, uh, eventually uh, judge me on my merit, not on my age. As a career politician, Joe Biden always had ambition for high office. He became vice president after Barack Obama was elected. Joe Biden has faced a number of personal tragedies in his life. The tragic loss of a wife and child in a car accident, and later in life, his son Beau to brain cancer. President Biden hasn't been without his own health battles either, facing serious brain aneurysms in the 1980s. I, uh, I had two cranial aneurysms. And they literally had to take the top of my head off. I mean, they take a saw and they cut your head off and, and go in to find the artery that is one was leaking, the other that hadn't before it burst. There's this, those of you who are docs know there's a, every, every, procession, every profession has their sick jokes. The joke among, among docs is, how do you know someone's had an aneur cranial aneurysm? On the autopsy table. Only 20% of the people have it even get to the table. Well, one of the fascinating things is that the second operation, after the first one, which was a bleed, and they gave me a relatively low chance of surviving. I remember going down to the dock, asking the dock, and, you know, you're counting the ceiling tiles, and you're heading into the operating room. A lot of you have been there. And uh, I said, Doc, what, what are my chances? I had two great neurosurgeons. And I'll never forget, I will not mention his name, he's one of the leading neurosurgeons in the, in the in the world. Um, he said, uh, Senator, for mortality or morbidity? And I'm thinking, <laughs> no, I swear to God. I'm thinking, oh, geez, you know, like, well, I said, let me put it this way. It was a long road to the operating room. I said, sister, absolutely true story. I said, what are my chances of getting off this table and being completely normal? He said, well, your chances of living are a lot better. <laughs> and I said, OK, what are they? He said, well, they're, they're, they're in the 35 to 50 percent range. And I thought, well, seriously, I was a born optimist. I said, well, hell, that means 35 out of 100, 50 out of 100 make it. I, was going, I might as well be the one. I said, well, what's the most likely thing that will happen if I, uh, if, if I live? But what? He said, well, the side of the brain that the first, artery, the first aneurysm is on controls your ability to speak. <laughs> and I thought, why in the hell didn't they tell me this before the 88 campaign? Uh, it could have saved us all a lot of trouble. You know what I mean? This health scare kept him away from the Senate for seven months. Well, in the 1980s, Joe Biden was very rigorous. He was only 45, 46 years old, and he ran for president. Biden's campaign for president did not go well, and he dropped out in late 1987. Shortly thereafter, he suffered uh, the first of two serious brain aneurysms. And uh, the first one was a bleeding aneurysm that was very bad. And uh, I believe he was even given the last rites by a Catholic priest. And Biden spent, I think, nine or 10 months in recovery. He was absent from the Senate. Um, when he returned, almost everyone who knew him detected differences. Uh, the aneurysms were in the part of the brain that control inhibitions. 
And Biden had always been gregarious and, you know, a hail fellow well met. But afterwards, there seemed to be a change in his personality. I've talked specifically to people who worked in the Senate at the time, to a former senator. Um, he, some of this unusual behavior that's been remarked, you know, the sniffing of uh, girls' hair, uh, this incident that Bernie Sanders recalls where as they were on a stage back, uh, were backstage waiting to go out on the debate platform, uh, Biden started rubbing his back. Um, Biden uh, making inappropriate comments to women or children. Uh, Biden saying the strangest things about ethnic groups, attempts at ethnic humor. All of that is past the time when Biden had these aneurysms. And they were always laughed at as, oh, that's just our crazy Uncle Joe and his eccentricities. But I think they go directly back to the time when he had these two aneurysms. He had an heroic recovery. Most people would have died, uh, but he didn't. He bottled back and has remained productive and useful. But those things can have a long stand, standing effect and they can accelerate the onset of dementia and other problems later in your life. But of course, we don't know much about this because the physicians at the time aren't talking. And the White House physicians uh, from today uh, don't even mention this, don't discuss any possible lingering effects. And uh, it's the media has more or less not followed up on it. I myself am old enough to have had lunch and breakfast with the old Joe Biden before his aneurysms. And I can tell you, he was a different person. The toll of Biden's age is becoming apparent, and his deterioration is clear for the world to see. A very real conversation is now being had about his ability to lead. And one of the main issues facing Democrats, among quite a long list, is there is no obvious successor to Joe Biden. Of course, a general rule of thumb under an ailing president is that the vice president could step up as a replacement. But with Kamala Harris extremely unpopular, insiders could have other plans for her. Kamala Harris is not viewed as a successful vice president. Her popularity ratings are below that of Joe Biden, whose average is about 41 or 40 percent. And she is not viewed as ready for prime time by many key Democrats. The problem, of course, is that she was picked as what we call a threefer. She is black, but she's also of, of Indian subcontinent uh, extraction, and she's a woman. She's the first female vice president and the first black vice president and the first Indian vice president. So to move her aside is, is a hard lift. And the consensus is that if Biden were not running, she would run for president. And because of the fact that over 60 percent of Democratic primary voters are either women or minorities, that she would have a good shot at the nomination. And the Democrats fear that she's a very weak candidate. So there are all kinds of speculations as to how to uh, deal with Kamala Harris. Um, the, th the thought that she could be, uh, quote, bought off, unquote, by a prestigious university presidency or the head of a think tank is unlikely. To go from vice president to that would be considered a step down. It would be considered a humiliation in some quarters. And I don't think she'd do that. Uh, one possibility is this. There's a 70-year-old Supreme Court justice who has health issues, Sonia Sotomayor. She's a Democrat and a liberal. Democrats would be very loath to lose that seat uh, should she stay in office and a Republican become president in 2025 and something happened to her. So the thinking is, Look, last year we had Joe Biden um, deal very much with a similar problem. Stephen Breyer was over 80 years old. He was a Supreme Court justice. He was a liberal. And Democrats more or less pressured, some say bullied him, into retirement. And that's how we got um, Ketanji Jackson Brown on the Supreme Court. Well, what if Sonia Sotomayor could be prevailed upon at age 70 to retire and be replaced by Kamala Harris. Um, it would be one minority, an Hispanic, for another minority, uh, an African-American. And um, Kamala Harris would win Senate confirmation. She's a former senator, and as vice president, she carries a lot of clout, and very few senators would want to vote against her. So that would, of course, mean that she would be elevated to a very high position, and it would not be considered a step down. And of course, there's some precedent 
for a Supreme Court justice to run for president. In 1916, Charles Evans Hughes resigned from the Supreme Court to run for president, uh, narrowly lost, but then eventually became Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, that would be one um, circuitous but very obvious route to uh, taking care of what Democrats call the Kamala problem. If Kamala was to move into the Supreme Court, this would make her the first vice president to take that position. Well, she's a lawyer. She's a former attorney general of California. She's certainly qualified for the position. Uh, I don't think there would be anything untoward about that. Um, we've certainly had unusual appointments by presidents. John F. Kennedy famously named his brother his own attorney general. We've had George W. Bush uh, select the head of his vice presidential selection committee, Dick Cheney, to be his vice president. Or perhaps Dick Cheney selected himself. The Kamala problem is often ignored by the media as they wish to celebrate the first black female VP and not point out her more than obvious flaws. Would we expect anything less from the mainstream media? What we are seeing from the media with Joe Biden's decline is that they do not want to ask any questions and the White House is quick to shut any that do emerge down. I will leave that there. Sort of looking at, I'm asking well, isn't, a it what it, isn't, that, isn't that what it's important? As a reporter, don't you think it's important what Americans care about? But my I'm question was, I'm just saying that is something that Americans want. Isn't that not true? That that they have a leader that's going to deliver for them. Your proposition may or may not be true, but it's not responsive no, to think, my question. I think it's very true. You're asking. No, I know what your question is. You're asking me if we're going to change anything from here. If the chief of staff has asked for to change anything from here, and and here's the thing. Here's the thing. We are not. Things happen. Other presidents have had similar situations, as you know, and I'm sure you've rep reported on the last president who's had a similar situation. And so look, things happen. This is a president that delivers and will continue to deliver for the American people, and that's what he cares about. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Does the yeah. president um, plan to serve all eight years? I'm not, I'm just not going to get ahead of the president. That's something for him to decide. I'm just not going to get ahead of it. And we're, there's a 2024 uh, campaign. Anything related to that, I would refer you to that. There is a level of transparency required when it comes to the health of the president. Each year, we are issued a report on their health by the White House physician. But as questions about Biden's health continue to be raised, the American people, and frankly, the world, need to know the true scale of Joe Biden's health issues. The White House physician in February issued a report on Biden's physical condition, but there were a lot of things he didn't address. Uh, what if the president, let's say, is physically able to do the job, but he's limited? Um, everyone observes that Biden does nothing before 10 o'clock in public. He does nothing almost always after four o'clock in the afternoon in public. So there's a window of about six hours where we see him functioning and all of the mistakes and foibles and falls and everything else happen in that time frame. What's he like before 10 o'clock in the morning and what's he like after four o'clock in the afternoon? We don't know. And no one will answer questions about that or they'll just give out pablum. So it is of concern, A, is the president physically well? B, um, does he have the stamina for the job? That's a 24 hour a day job. And C, uh, is there perhaps, you know, episodes where he is in cognitive decline? You know, we all have good hours and bad hours if we're at, sometimes at that age, good days and bad days. Are there bad days where he's diminished in capacity? Uh, we don't have answers to any of that. Now, the relevant comparison that you make is 1944, when Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the commander in chief and president in World War II. He decided to run for re-election. In March of 1944, he finally agreed to have a full physical from the White House physicians, and they find he had extreme congestive heart trouble. And uh, they did not think he would live more than about another year. That was covered up by the White House physicians, and um, it was not revealed or discussed during the 1944 campaign. The American people went to the polls with very incomplete information. Roosevelt was sworn into office for a fourth term on January 20th, 1945, and within 90 days he was dead from a cerebral hemorrhage. 
Now, there's also a recent book that came out saying that the White House physicians also covered up the fact that he had serious brain issues uh, and that they could have predicted a cerebral hemorrhage, and they covered that up too. Now, we were lucky, I think, to have a president, Harry Truman, who worked out well, but it could have been someone else who might not have worked out well in the closing months of World War II or in the post-war chaos that a president had to sort through. And the cover-up was real, and uh, there's no, there's no, there's no, let's put it this way. There is no doubt that uh, another White House filled with ambitious young people whose careers and whose livelihood depend on the incumbent remaining in office wouldn't be complicit in a similar cover up today. It would be harder to do. On the other hand, Biden makes it hard to ask questions. He almost never has a one-on-one -on -one interview with a reporter anymore. It's usually a friendly reporter, if at all. He almost never holds, holds full-scale news conferences. And every weekend, almost, it seems he retreats to Delaware, uh, his home there. And uh, that's a secure area where there are no visitor logs. We don't know who sees him. We don't know if he gets extra medical attention there. Uh, again, this is all speculation, but it's speculation based on the very unusual habits of this president. And almost everyone around him has doubts about him running again, and including many people who are his friends who tell him he shouldn't. And certainly many Democrats who are friendly to him ideologically don't want him to run because the risk is too great. Uh, what if he, he has to debates, you know, there will be at least three debates. What if there are three debates uh, with his Republican opponent and he has a brain freeze? and is it inarticulate? What if he falls and trips during a critical moment when the cameras are there? Uh, that could change the entire tenor and shape of any presidential campaign and dramatically weaken the Democratic ticket. When it comes to the media, it is always one rule for the left and one rule for the rest. Of course, during Trump's presidency, his mental and physical fitness was both poked fun of and forensically examined day after day after day. The New York Times never missed the chance to call him out. What Trump's speech says about his mental fitness? Cognitive test Trump took may have been undermined by publicity, doctors warn. Trump's walk down ramp at West Point raises new health questions. So the day after Joe Biden's latest fall, well, wouldn't you expect a large concern about Joe Biden's health? <laughs> Quote, embarrassing moments are not uncommon for presidents who spend much of their tenure in front of the cameras. Yep, just another day of unbiased journalism at the New York Times. But the media have a duty of care to report and raise questions around the health of the commander in chief. The decline of the president is real and it's plain for all to see. Frankly, it's time for Joe Biden to listen to his own past advice. The earlier we get this help, the better we'll all be.